Hello again. Thank you for watching this. Uh, as you'll notice, lost the beard uh, from last time. Was going to go, uh, so I was trying to do a Bob's Burgers thing for Halloween. I was going to go with the mustache, um, but looking at myself in the mirror um, and I was shaving the other day, I was like, I don't think I can live with the mustache on my face for 15, 16 days until Halloween. Um, I mean, that's no offense to anyone with a mustache, but for me, it just was not working. And also, it's looking too much like my dad. So, oh, there are some issues we can get into if we want. Um, thank you to everyone who has uh, subscribed to this crazy channel and to uh, and left comments on the first video. Uh, I had very low expectations about what was going to happen with that clip, and you all have exceeded it in a weird and wonderful way, so thank you. Um, very inspired now to keep moving forward and keep doing videos. Uh, one other addendum, something I left off for the last one, is that uh, another vinyl-related piece to my life is I do a column every month for Paste Magazine called Record Time, uh, running down new uh, vinyl releases, uh, some new stuff that's come out, and then a lot of reissues, and then a little bit with gear and equipment that I'm sort of dabbling a bit into. So feel free to look into that, pastemagazine.com, if that be your thing. So I thought uh, for this one, just going to run down some of the stuff that I've picked up over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I love watching people do this in their videos, so I thought I would follow uh, suit with that. Starting off uh, with a couple of things I picked up at Musique Plastique, the uh, record store that had a physical space in a couple of spots on Alberta and then here in Portland, Oregon. Uh, went online during the pandemic and they lost their space and they opened up again in Lloyd Center, our shopping mall here in town, uh, which has kind of become a big part of what a lot of people are looking at as a renaissance of this uh, space, turning it into more of a community-centric space, uh, as well as having the the retail end of things and, and the ice rink that's there, the food court, all that stuff. And so they're, the owners of that are really welcoming in uh, small local businesses. And so uh, Music Plastique has moved in there. There's a comic book store now, a place that deals in a lot of uh, video games and anime stuff. And then uh, a place, uh, Dream Street, a uh, business started by an, an old friend of mine who they do a lot of uh, great silkscreen t-shirts. Uh, so yeah, so if you're ever in Portland, uh, stop by the mall of all places, Lloyd Center. It's kind of amazing right now. Uh, but Music Plastique's always been a favorite of mine, so whenever I'm at the mall, for whatever reason, I'll stop in there and generally end up spending some money. Um, and so I started, one thing I got was this, which is um, Francoise Hardy album. I hope I'm saying her name properly. Ah, Suive. I hope I'm saying that as well. Uh, translates to To Be Continued. Glare from the, uh, glare from the out of doors right here. Uh, fantastic uh, pop record. It's uh, obviously a Japanese pressing. I don't know if you can probably check that. Clock that, I mean. Fantastic pop record from 1981. Um, she was getting into, I think the music was getting into more, uh, some more of the 80s textures, sort of Christopher Cross sounding stuff on here, but uh, her voice is unmistakably great. And I'm a big fan of her work, so whenever I run across one of her records, I gotta snap it up. Uh, and another thing I picked up, which I'll take out of the plastic sleeves, there's not a lot of glare, is this um, lump dub. A uh, bit of techno dub material uh, released uh, on a German label. I think they are German, this group Lump, um, which is not the uh, isn't the group Lump that I think Laura Marling is part of, but this is a, uh, yeah, German sort of minimalist techno dub, uh, which I really, really dig. Yeah. Um, another place that I've been to recently, uh, as I'm trying to get this in the sleeve, is, what are they called, Exiled Records, that's been on uh, Southeast Hawthorne here in Portland for a while, uh, has changed hands, ownership, and the uh, vibe and mood and stock of that store has changed with it, and I, I, I hesitate to say this, but not for the better, in my opinion, uh, Exiled used to truck in a lot of experimental and avant-garde uh, stuff, which I love. Now it is pretty standard stuff, um, but worth still checking out. They usually get a lot of interesting new stuff in, like this record that I found in their little $5 section, which is uh, Donald Byrd's, what is it, Places and Spaces? Uh, something that was just reissued, I think, late, earlier this year, late last year, by Blue Note. It's part of the sort of regular reissue series that they've been doing. Uh, record from, what is it, 1975? 
on Donald Byrd's when he's sort of getting deep into disco funk territory, but uh, with that, he does it very, very well. There's a lot of great grooves on this record. Highly recommend it. Um, another place that I've been looking for records is uh, some online auction sites. Um, ATX Auctions, I mean, they're obviously based out of Austin, Texas, but uh, uh, they do online auctions for all sorts of stuff. And there's been a couple of uh, vinyl auctions that have come up. Uh, one that's ongoing right now, and I've been at a bunch of stuff. Keep my fingers crossed about that. Um, both looking for stuff for myself and stuff for, for resale. And... Yeah, I picked up a couple of things. I picked up a copy of the McDonald and Giles record, which is uh, two of the gents who were... Early, one of them is at least an early part of King Crimson. And then, uh, if you know the record, the Giles, Giles and Fripp record. Uh, it's two brothers, Rhythm Section and Robert Fripp, playing together. And both of those guys are actually on this record, but it's just credited to one of the Giles boys. Uh, I don't remember which one. But um, it's one of those records that um, really deep into the psych prog territory that I will snap up any copy I find just to give to other people because I think it's such a great record. Um, but one that I found for myself was this great um, double 12 inch by the classic British uh, techno group LFO. Um, it's, yeah, double 12 inch of their single Tied Up, uh, which one record features the original, a bunch of remixes, and then the, the second one is, I th is a features a remix by Jason Spaceman of Spiritualized, which I haven't yet to listen to, but I'm really excited about. Um, so I do love LFO, so if you run across their stuff on Warp Records, highly recommended. Um, now, another thing you'll, you'll find if you follow my Instagram, as well follow me here, is I'm an inveterate, uh, unapologetic thrifter. I like going to thrift stores, digging around for records there. It can be a difficult thing, because, you know, um, a lot of the Goodwills here understand what they have, has some value to it, and so I think they have some people on staff who are looking for things that they can resell online, but a lot of stuff still comes through uh, that I, yeah, that I snap up whenever I get a chance to, both, again, to resell, because that's, you know, a great return on investment, so you're paying very little, and then hopefully you're getting stuff that you can, uh, you know, sell for a decent amount, but then I find a lot of stuff for myself as well, which I try to hold on to. Uh, so this next bunch of stuff is all thrifting things, the stuff that I found in the thrifting world. Um, one of this, uh, it's a local guy, Rich Halley, a great, great saxophone player here in Portland, who uh, recently put out a couple of records featuring he and uh, Matthew Shipp, great avant-garde piano player. And so he kind of works in that vein, very free, modal stuff. Uh, this is a little more straightforward, this one, um, because it features... Uh, some pretty straightforward players like Thera Memory, the late trumpet player, and Obo Adi, the late uh, percussionist, uh, African percussionist, who was huge here in Portland, bringing a lot of African sounds to the city. Um, but a beautiful, beautiful record, this one, Multnoma Memory, Multnoma Rhythms. So it's got a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, inspiration from native rhythms and African rhythms, and yeah, pretty incredible album. Some great, great players on here, but uh, Rich Halley's the one, man. He's great. Look into his work. Highly recommend it. Um, a lot of the stuff that came through my thrifting that I saw was a lot of uh, Spanish language records uh, from Central and South America. I'll try to move some of these around so I can get to those easier. Um, yeah, really interesting stuff. Uh, these are the two that I have yet to listen to, but they've fallen to the, the 70s, 80s uh, pop vein, sort of, um, if you know some of Julio Iglesias, is kind of the sound of that. So there's a little bit of that going on here, but I'm very, you know... It still sounds pretty great from the little bits that I listen to, uh, either of these online. And so this is a collection of this, this artist, uh, Rocio Dorado and uh, Lolita. Um, yeah, this one from the 1980s, so from the 86. Figure I'd give it a flyer on that. I'm sure there might be a couple gems on there for DJing or something. Uh, this one, let me find this other one that was part of this bunch. There's a couple of them uh, featuring some great bolero singers. From, I believe from Mexico, maybe from Chile. These were released in Mexico at least, but um, some great bolero singers. Uh, a lot of these recordings are from the 40s and 50s. Um, people who are very well known uh, in South America for uh, their traditional uh, work in the bolero and cancion singing. Uh, Tona, Tonia La Negra, whose uh, real name is Antonio, and sorry. Antonio Peregrino and Daniel Santos. I think he did some film work too, Daniel Santos. But both of these, I, I love both of these records. Just, you know, beautiful singing, 
incredible performances by the musicians. Um, and yeah, really cool, uh, really cool graphic design on these two. These Mexican releases on the Echo label. Uh, I feel like flamenco. Got a little bit of that as well from uh, El Nino de Ronda, uh, accompanied by Caratero, uh, the real flamenco. Uh, I love flamenco singing. So passion, passionate and so uh, moving, so inspiring. And it's a lot of stuff that was recorded. It says here in 1955. This is on. A, this is an American release on Tradition Records, an LA label. Uh, but yeah, this, I'm gonna look into more stuff by this uh, this artist El Nino El Nino de Ronda. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Uh, this is the one that was, I, I thought the. I'm gonna do this one. I'll talk about this one first. This one. Uh, this is Otra Vez by uh, Los Chalchaderos. I hope I'm saying that right. I grew from Argentina. A very traditional Argentinian folk music, a group that was uh, started in 1948 and I think went on in various permutations till as recently as 2006, I think, till most of the original members had, had passed on by then. Um, but this is a fantastic record. Oh, so good. Um, yeah, really, really great. This is a wonderful stereo copy of it. And I love this little thing where I wonder if there was someone at RCA. Uh, in Mexico that had to cross out mono on every copy of this one. Uh, that poor intern they got to do that job. Um, yeah, this their stuff is online. This one I found on Tidal, like streaming. Uh, you should go check this out. It's really gorgeous uh, vocal harmonies and really minimalist uh, uh, acoustic accompaniment. Um, pretty great stuff. Um, the last one that I got of that bunch that I'm really stoked on is this Cuban uh, folk record by these gentlemen Silvio Rodriguez and Pablo Milanes. Uh, they were the progenitors of this new movement of Nueva Trova. Um, uh, amazing folk music, uh, um, political folk music, um, going against the popular regime there, even though, um, as you can see, there's a little picture of Fidel in the midst there. Um, but yeah, this is really fascinating and gorgeous stuff, just, you know, um, shouting out Angela Davis on a song and uh, Salvador Allende um, really really yeah really really powerful music on here and a great um, great trifold sleeve um, so the record it's not like a traditional sleeve where the record just slides into one spot and stays there so it's in this kind of folded out area because you want to see this, this great design in the back um, yeah, I read a little bit about these guys. Uh, I think Silvio Rodriguez is still going strong, even in his 80s. Uh, Pablo Milanes, I don't think he's with us anymore, but really, really beautiful Cuban folk music. Um, yeah, it's, you know, highly recommend this one. You can track something. These guys, I think, have, have a fair amount of stuff online you can listen to, but uh, this is... Really, really interesting stuff. Um, I need to dig more into you know what they were doing for the uh, the revolution in Cuba, Cuba, Cuba. I'll say that. Um, so here's something I got from an eBay auction. Uh, something I've been wanting for some time. Nice. Uh, I don't know if this is original press or this is, might be yeah French pressing because it was from a French person. I bought this from of uh, the great King Crimson's. Starless and Bible Black. I don't know how I stumbled across this. I think it was one of those recommended auctions when I was looking for God knows what other prog record. And I was like, you know what? I don't have Starless and Bible Black. I think I'd like to get this. And then the, the, it was a buy it now situation. And it was very, very inexpensive for what I was getting. At least it felt that way. Maybe you might disagree. The better half might disagree with me on that. Um, yeah, really gorgeous copy of this record, too. Um, beautiful, uh, those wonderful pink rimmed island their labels there. Uh, everybody loves King Crimson. Who doesn't love King Crimson? This looks like the last of the, not the last of that, was it the last of the, the, the sort of classic era of this band? David Cross, John Wetton, Bill Bruford era? I think so, because this, this is obviously well before the Adrian Blue, Tony Levine era, which I slowly learning to love. It's one of those things that I avoided for some time, even though I liked, I like what I hear, but it's like, it's like I never wanted to throw on three of a perfect pair or, or, or red or any of those records. And maybe I should be getting into those more, but when I find them, I'll, I'll listen to them. 
had a friend, so, uh, you know, like all of us, we buy stuff on Discogs pretty regularly, and I have my friend who I'm in a uh, record collecting friend, fellow record collector, I'm in a group chat with other fellow record collectors, and he is always looking on Discogs for deals and stuff to buy, and one of the dealers he found uh, had a lot of interesting stuff, and asked me if I was interested, if any of me and my friends want to, you know, get in on this buy he was going to do, and so I, I asked him to grab me a couple things, but with little trepidation, because in every one of the descriptions for the records, it said something about, you know, this was, you know, these are visually tested, I don't play test them, and this all come from an ex-smoker's home, so be aware there might be some odor involved with it, as, as I'm sure you, you are already grimacing and wincing about. Uh, luckily, and he said, so we got all the stuff that he, that he bought, including the couple things that I did, picked up, which is the, the Robin Hitchcock record and the, the Rosillo's album. Um, and he was like, yeah, there's no smell at all. These are all in better condition than I expected. And it was like, awesome. So I had a little windfall of cash from something I bought on Discog. So I went and flipped around to buy some stuff from this guy. And so that's what these next four things are, uh, things that I do need to clean, especially this first one, because there's a bit of, there's a healthy little bit of schmutz on this one. This is, uh, the Richard Mother Thompson record, Shoot Out the Lights, uh, classic album of the, uh, end of a marriage is what this record really is. It's like they were making this record as things were falling apart between Richard and Linda's, because it's the last thing they did together. Um, which is uh, represented in this sleeve with all the torn wallpaper and the, the inner there and on the front and why they're not in the same room together even though they're singing together on this record. Uh, but just an absolute masterpiece. Uh, brutal to listen to some of these songs. Uh, like Man in Need and Don't Renege on Our Love even though they're kind of upbeat it's still just like, oh, it's, it's tough knowing what was going on and uh, Walking on a Wire as well. But yeah, there's some... There's something on here. There's a stain of some kind that's going to come off when I clean it, but I just haven't had a chance to really get this in the spin clean, which you can see behind me. Um, so, yeah, I need to do that at some point, get that cleaned up. Uh, yeah, this dude had more Robin Hitchcock stuff in the in the, in the store, so I grabbed uh, another favorite Robin Hitchcock record, Element of Light, uh, American Pressing of this in Relativity. Um, hopefully you know Robin Hitchcock, one of the great British singer-songwriters. Um, yeah, really arch sensibility, really psychedelic influenced guy. He's a big fan of, he's a big fan of Dylan and Sid Barrett and sort of combines those two aesthetics into a lot of his work, especially with his band Soft Boys. And this was him with his uh, band The Egyptians and Morse Windsor on drums and the bass player's name, Andy, his name I can never remember, Andy Metcalf. A uh, guy who actually went on to play with Squeeze for a stretch. Uh, this has got some, yeah, some of my favorite songs of his on here. If You Were a Priest and Airscape and Raymond Chandler, e <clears throat> Raymond Chandler Evening. I think Raymond Chandler Evening is like the first one that really blew me away. And kind of got, helped me understand what uh, Robin Hitchcock is all about. So, really happy to have this one. Uh, another one that, this might be a, buyer beware situation because the condition of this one isn't as great as I was expecting it to be the King's Arthur um, I think that's a record I've been looking to get a hold of for a little while but you know everyone we could argue about this all day I think I agree with uh, the mighty Tom Sharpling that you know everyone seems to point at Village Green as being the high watermark for the kinks in this era but this is the one for me I think this is just stem to stern a uh, uh, filled with great songs and yeah und undeniable record uh yeah the record again the visually grading i i took a chance on this one it wasn't like that expensive but it was still just like playing it's like oh god some spots in there that is like really poppy and noisy and i think even a the, the needle jumped at one point early on it's like oh so <clears throat> probably gonna be upgrading this at some point but this was the big get for me, which was the first Small Faces record, an original um, Decca mono press of this one. Um, so slowly building up my collection of classic Brit British rock music. Um, yeah, can't deny these guys. Look at those, look at those handsome devils on there. 
was so excited and probably so stoned when they took that picture. But uh, yeah, some of their best stuff on here. Uh, but I love the small faces. Love the faces too, but the small faces. Steve Marriott, uh, so incredible as a performer and a vocalist. Though I do remember a little side trip we're going to take here that I do remember a um, almost an argument I got into with someone when we were we talking about Led Zeppelin and what, how I, you know, talking about how great they were, and someone was like, eh, they're fine, but they would have been so much better if they had gotten Steve Marriott to sing. I was like, maybe? Is that, you know, I mean, you listen to Humble Pie, it's not that far afield, I guess, from some Zeppelin stuff, but, you know, yeah. And that's just my brain, because you can't, you can't pull Robert, Robert Plant out of Led Zeppelin. That just doesn't work, in my mind. But then again, maybe it's because I'm so used to listening to those four playing together, as long as they did. So, one couple other things to, to show off. Um, this one being... Uh, some things as I sell records and whatnot, but I'm also buying some records and whatnot. Um, trying to be cautious about it, but, you know, you wouldn't be watching this channel if you weren't also, uh, someone that takes, <laughs> that can justify buying records to yourself, even if the money's not there. Um, well, the money's there. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. It's like, well, you know, I could figure out the money at some point, you know, move some cash around and, you know, justify paying for this record that I really, really want. Uh, but this one came up in one seller's uh, show a couple weeks back. Um, Salem Mass is the group, though they are, though it's called Salem Mass, it's more talking about, uh, as the title of the record says, Witch Burning. Uh, these guys are from, if I remember correctly, someplace in Idaho, Northwest band. Uh, we're together for a while. I'm kind of falling into the uh, deep purple blue oyster cult uh, <clears throat> coven style of hard rock with uh, some really great keyboard work on here. Uh, very short lived group. Uh, this has been reissued a few times. This is not an original pressing of it. This is uh, an unofficial European uh, repress, but something I rarely ever see and something I've been wanting for a little while now. Uh, so again, one of those avenues of collecting. I'm going down to the you know, psych prog heavy rock world. I'm trying to find obscurities in that place because you know you can find Emerson Lake and Palmer records, you know, every day and twice on Sunday. But you know, finding a Salem Mass record out in the wild is a rarity. So I'm pretty excited to have this really really great um, hard rock. Check these guys out. I'm sure there's some stuff on YouTube. I never looked. Uh, let's see, I think the last thing I want to show was something that came through. Because, uh, you know, with that column that I'm talking about it for Paste, I get a, you know, promos of records, which is, you know, an absolute dream. Uh, and Vinyl Me Please has been in touch fairly regularly. Uh, they sent me the Jazz Dispensary releases that they did uh, not too long ago. Uh, sent me things like the Quincy Jones box set, the Grateful Dead, Story of the Grateful Dead set, which has been pretty cool. Um, and they sent me uh, a record by, I think it was David Porter, that is either out now or coming out. But they threw in here, and I don't know if this was, this might have been a mistake, I don't know if they meant to send this to me, but I was pretty stoked that, you know, get this uh, nice double LP reissue of the first Interpol album. Is it on? Turn on the bright lights. I keep wanting to say turn out the bright lights. Uh, yeah, I, this is a band I ignored, I think, for a long time, because uh, it kind of fell, this is nice red wax, they kind of fell into that post-punk world where I was like, well, I can just hear all your reference points, what you're, what you're ripping off here, your Joy Division, your Killing Joke, um, why would I want to listen to that when I can just grab, a, you know, what's this for, or grab Unknown Pleasures off the shelf and listen to that instead, but, uh, so, you know, but I've come to appreciate them over the years, um, hearing them on the, uh, satellite radio pretty regularly. Um, yeah, so I was pretty excited to get this and, and been listening to it a little bit. And yeah, it's just a solid, solid New York post-punk record. Uh, can't, can't go wrong with these guys, I think. Uh, I'll start digging into their other stuff, the other records after this, um, a little bit, but it's not a huge priority, but 
this one's good enough for me for now. I'm just happy to have this one to, you know, have in the collection. Listen to if I ever feel like it, which I probably will. I don't know. I'm getting into them. I'm starting to enjoy their work. Uh, yeah, I think that's good for now. Um, once again, thank you all for subscribing, for commenting. Um, I know there was some... There was a request, I think, some a comment of a uh, tour of the record room here, which is actually my home office. Um, I'm not quite there yet. We'll see. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is if you are in Portland or the Northwest area, there's a record show um, on Saturday, which would be Saturday the 22nd, um, October 22nd, called the Record Hawk Show. That's happening, I believe, at the Doubletree by Lloyd Center. Uh, I will have a table there selling some records. So I think after that, if there's, uh, between that and the whatnot uh, auction that I've got set for Wednesday, um, once I clear out some of the stuff that's here, because what you can't see below the camera is the boxes and piles of stuff that are down here, and I'd like to keep it that way. And you can kind of get a sense of what things are looking like with this, uh, i try to figure out my finger here, this stack of... Uh, books right here that were on the floor for a while, but I found a place for them after getting this shelf and rearranging a lot of stuff. So once things are a little straightened up around here, I will give folks a tour of this space. Um, we're not quite there yet. Um, I will say there's not a record player in here in my office. All that stuff is out in the living room just because that's where that's what, that's yeah, that's where I have the space for it. It'd be a little too overwhelming, I think, uh, sound-wise in this office. Um, so yeah, at some point I will get to a nice tour of this space. Uh, and I think someone else uh, corrected me on, I think I said Stuart Staples' name wrong, from the Tinder Sticks in my first video. I think that's what that comment was about, and if so, thank you. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm sure I've made a bunch already in this video, so feel free to correct me. Um, and yeah, another sort of uh, addendum and B kind of situation, Nota Bene. Uh, when I was doing the 30 Most Valuable Records in the collection video, I should have um, did the, the preface that that is just the individual single records. Uh, these box sets that are behind me here, and a lot of the ones that are you can't see up above, those, you know, obviously trump uh, any of the individual records. A bunch of them trump the individual records as far as value goes, but that's box sets for you. And, yeah, there was another comment someone had about, you know, yes, it's a shame that people are doing these... It's a bit of a shame that people are doing these videos based on the median, um, the median value that's on Discogs, rather than I think uh, they were they were uh, suggesting sort of the value of uh, the value of the records based on the last amount it was sold for, which maybe there's a way to search for that in Discogs. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, it's a, it's an un. Uh, unscientific system, maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, it's it's probably not the best way to mark out the value of this, because like I said in the video, some of the sleeves and the condition of some of those records weren't going to you know, weren't gonna cut the mustard, and I wouldn't get the medium price anyway for them, but whatever. It was supposed to be a fun video anyway, so we can pick nits all we want about that. So yeah, that's all I got for now. I will try to do one of these next week, likely with the stuff that I snagged at the Record Hawk show. Uh, so again, uh, the Record Hawk Show, I will be there. If you are in Portland, stop by Crossroads Records on Foster or Memory Den on Southeast 2nd, where I've got tables. Look for the code RHA. You can also find me on Whatnot, where I'm trying to do uh, auctions auctions every Wednesday around noon Pacific time. Uh, the next one that will be coming up uh, this coming Wednesday on the 19th is going to be an all-Kate Bush auction. If you're looking for Kate Bush Records, or collect collectible records, I've got a bunch uh, from an estate that I purchased a while back, um, came with a ton of Kate Bush records, a bunch that I've kept for myself to fill up my, the holes in my collection, but a lot of them, uh, yeah, I just have sitting around here, so I'm going to see about reselling them. There's some great colored variants and uh, bootleg in there, some singles, yeah, some really neat stuff, so look for Robert Ham on whatnot, and yeah, read my stuff when you find it on Paste, like I said, I do the monthly thing, a uh, monthly column called Record Time about vinyl that comes out on the last weekday of every month. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing. Y'all are great. It's fun to be part of this community. And yeah, we'll uh, be back again next week. Thanks.